अलग है दिस इज ओपर एंड दिस इज अ वीडियो दैट फॉलोज अप अ वीडियो दैट आई डिड अ कपल वीक्स बैक which was my reaction to Mr. Kirvin and Galloway, a.k.a. Audio Architects, uh, first comic dub of Emissaries to Malastair issue 1, so you can check that out. Uh, here I'm gonna be doing the review uh, of this uh, particular comic dub, and I'm gonna be expressing my thoughts after watching it and reacting it, because I didn't have time to say everything. Uh, let's start with... Um, Let's go in no particular order. Let's just discuss stuff hopping from here to here, from there to there. Uh, let's start with Ethan Peel. Um, now, obviously, um, Corbinian said that he wanted uh, Roy Bunalis, it is, I believe, uh, to play Ethan Peel, but unfortunately, of course, he couldn't, uh, which is why he uploaded another video with his portrayal. Uh, but I'd like to say that Corbinian himself was pretty good in the role, I would say. Uh, I think um, I think it's there are a bit too many similarities with his Plo Koon voice, but I wouldn't say it's Corbinian's fault uh, because obviously there's just so much where your voice can go, and I think he did a good uh, job differentiating the two. I really enjoyed the Russian accent, uh, and I enjoyed the mannerisms he sort of gave him, especially when uh, I don't remember. Is it when even lifts that kind of heavy thing, and he's like. Ugh! The sound that uh, Corbinian made there, I, re I really enjoyed. Um, now, Sharon Grunwald, actually, as Adi Gallia in this one, I actually prefer her over her portrayal in Acts of War, and I love her in Acts of War, but the thing is, there she kind of, at times, she kind of, um, I wouldn't say, it was never bad, it's just that sometimes it felt like it went, um, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but in this one, it's like very stable. It's always very like this. Whereas in Acts of War, there are parts where it kind of went a little off, like, uh, oh, I wish I could choose the wording, but I can't right now. Maybe if I filmed this another time, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, anyway, I'll probably explain it, uh, explain that in some other video if people are curious. Now let's talk about Kieri Mundi. If I am to be honest, I don't like the way Kiari Mundi was portrayed in Outlander, neither do I like how he's portrayed in this one. Uh, I guess this is just me, it isn't really anyone else, I'd say, but I myself always love to stick to however people are portrayed in the movies, so I don't want to go beyond that, I don't like it. In the movies, never was Kiari Mundi uh, as, like, Kiari Mundi seemed more shocked here at the dark woman appearing out of nowhere, than uh, he did uh, in Revenge of the Sith, when his own troopers opened fire on him. And I don't like that. Kiari Mundi always very much remained calm. And yes, he did show some emotion, more particularly yeah, in that scene in, Return of, uh, in Revenge of the Sith, where he got shot at, but it was still very little emotion. It, his face was always very simple, very plain and simple. In these comics, he's always so exaggeratedly portrayed and... Um, where it, yeah, it does work for the comic, but in connection to the movies, I don't believe it works. Obviously, me and Corbinian have different opinions on that, and that's fine, but I don't like the way he's portrayed. Now, speak, however, Corbinian did an awesome job as Kieri Mundi in this one, no doubt. Especially, you can see my reaction, when he gets scared by the dark woman. I love that moment, just even though I don't feel like that's how Kieri Mundi would act, Corbinian just added so much emotion there. This is my favorite portrayal of his by far, because he always is very calm here, and he goes like this. Whereas in the others, he kind of went a bit higher at times. I don't quite like that. Here, he always remains very, very this much the same throughout the whole thing, without really going higher than needed or lower than needed, and I think he's found the perfect balance by now. As for myself as Anakin Skywalker, if I do say so myself, I enjoyed myself. I did not expect to enjoy myself that much, because I remember when I recorded that, I was actually not as pleased uh, with the recording as I was when I actually watched the dub. I, I was very critical when I initially recorded those lines, I definitely do remember that, because I, I wanted to be spot on, Jake Lloyd, spot on, and I couldn't do it. And I was very critical, but now that I look back at it, no, I, I believe I did better than I initially gave myself uh, credit for, so <laughs> a little tap on the back. Not, of course, to be selfish or anything. Um, 
Ryan Pratt, Ryan Pratt, uh, amazing as Asherad once again. I, I initially, I, oh, I immediately loved him as Asherad as soon as he appeared, but he really turned it to the whole other level by now. He's amazing as Asherad. As for Eve Kaff, however, he does a spot on Chris Utterly impression, but I don't like Chris Utterly as the character, so that's why I don't like him as Eve Kaff. Even though he does a great impression, I think Eve should have either um, a kind of uh, a nasal voice, I think, or he should have a very low pitched voice, which is why I love, um, which is why I love Kevin Michael Richardson as the character in the Obi Wan game. He's exactly what I think Eve should sound like. I would love to hear what Hassan Shapi uh, would do as the character, given he played him in the movies but never got a single line. But poor Hassan Shapi. Um, then of course Yaddle, only one t only one line, but fantastic by Sharon. Um, then we had uh, the wonderful Freepio Protocol droids series. I love them. I, I they had very little, so I couldn't quite judge the actor, but they were pretty good. So um, good job on that. Um, whoever voiced them, I don't believe I remember the name at the current moment. The dark woman really made me love her. Her the performance by, uh, was it, is, what's her name? I don't remember her name, personally, I'm so sorry. But the, your performance, if you're listening to this, as the Dark Woman was shockingly amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I loved it. Um, I wasn't so sure about it when I first heard it in Outlander 2, because I was like, oh, you know, it's, it's simple. I don't know where this is going. It's kind of a bit boring for me. I mean, I like it, but here... Fantastic! I now understand the character completely, and I loved the performance. So good job on that. Um, now, um, lastly, Gary Scales. Nice to hear him again as Mace Windu. Obviously, Corbinian explained that he uh, doesn't judge the character based on a certain actor, but just as a character, which I understand, but I myself think uh, I don't agree with that logic, personally, just my opinion. Uh, because technically, if they, for example, if they cast, uh, if an official source casts someone absolutely awful as Windu, that's still, and if that was canon and that was officially cast, you would still consider that Windu, even though that's like a very bad actor. That, that doesn't quite make sense to me, but we could discuss that privately later on. Um, the editing in this one, pretty good, especially during the lightsaber duel. Obviously, you've got your own style, I've got my own style, you have been critical of my style in the past, which I completely understand, but I love your style, personally. Um, the editing, amazing. Uh, the sound sounds very good, but I guess the, 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 the moments when I love the sounds the most is probably when the Freepio sound effect of the Freepio droid kind of walking, because that is a very rare sound effect. And I don't know how you managed to extract it so clearly, because I have it on my channel, please check out this video, but uh, it's nowhere near as clear, it's very, it, it, it's, so for you to extract such a clean uh, snippet is very, very good, I love that. Uh, and I, I think we're heading for a bright future with the future of the story, I think we're gonna have more about Malister and so on, and I'm excited to see where this leads. So thank you for checking out the review. Goodbye.